and welcome back to a new tutorial. This time I'm going to show you how to make a timecode timer that also displays the milliseconds, not the frame rate, unlike my last tutorial. It's super easy. I'm going to show you how. So let's just jump right into it. All right. So here we have my screen. I'm just going to boot up Resolve. I'm currently working with the latest version of DaVinci Resolve 17. It says here Studio, but this functionality also works in the free version. Don't worry, you don't need to buy it. And here we go. This is our project viewer. I'm just going to add a new project, call it game time IL because we want to track individual levels in our use case here. And there we go. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17. I'm going to switch over here to this tab, just the edit tab. And I have everything closed for you right now. So this is nothing. And if you want to open it, we open here with media pool. That's where we start. First, we want, of course, our asset or our video. So we're just going to import the media. I have a file here, for example, this recording from Metric Solid 1. I want to change the project frame rate so it matches the FPS that is here, which we can also check in here in Project Manager. We can also check the project frame rate here in the project settings. It says timeline frame rate and playback frame rate, both are at 30. FPS with a resolution of full HD. Nothing to change, so we just cancel here. Then we right click and create a new timeline using the selected clip. That will automatically transfer over all we have in the video here, such as format, full HD resolution, and the timeline frame rate of the equal 30 FPS. Not 25, 30 it is. And that's our video. I'm going to delete these two audio lanes here. These are Discord or microphone. We don't need that for this course. But remove just these empty lines here, delete empty tracks. And now we can start taking our individual timeline here. I want two things basically. I want to add first a solid, which we can do here in our toolbox. Just go on the magnifying glass and look for solid color because we want to have a nice contrast of our timer that we have and the level in the background. So we just Put the cursor here you can see solid color is completely black we change that by going here on the top right to the inspector where my webcam right now is there we go so in the top right is the inspector you can just open that and then generator we can change the color to something else i don't know how about this nice blue in the settings here we can change also the position we make the zoom here smaller and with the position we can just move it over here so what you want to do is instead of having just text here, we can do right click and then set it to an expression. What we did beforehand was just time code, which automatically fits in a time code. And that's also very nice. You can see here moving frame by frame. The very first on the right side digit is each frame. And on 30, it goes back to zero naturally. And then we have a new second. That way you can display your hour, minutes, seconds, and frames. But what we want to do is usually especially when we have in speed runs, we want to track our milliseconds. So how do we achieve that? Well, we can remove here this time code expression. So it's just a basic text. We can also delete that. And what we want to do is instead is an expression. And if you are just only here for this expression, that's fine. It's in your video description down below. You can enter it like that. And that's the result. I can explain the expression to you in detail so you know what you can do with that here. I, for example, have removed the hour because individual levels are usually not an hour long, hopefully. In our cases, they are a maximum of minutes and seconds, and of course, many seconds long, sometimes only uh, seconds and milliseconds. I'm going to show you how you can remove the minutes if you want to later on, but again, this code here that you have, just put it in here in the expression, and then you're good to go. You can move it around as usual the settings here, zoom and stuff like that, position manipulation, and then you're fine. Like this, for example. So we have uh, the beginning of a clip here and starts automatically counting with the milliseconds in the frames. Because we only have 30 frames here, the resolution basically is each frame is 33 milliseconds worth and a little bit more. There we go. But when you stop, for example, at a certain point, so okay, here's the fight. And right here, when the timer stops, except on this frame, we can just go in, press B to cut the text here. 
And then when we go, go back here on title, you can take this value here and say remove expression. And that sets the time basically to what it was at this point in time. So if you go back, we have two minutes, three seconds here and it jumps around a little bit. Maybe it's a bit buggy here. I'm not entirely sure. But what you can do is just go in here on the left text, copy it, insert it on the right, and you're good to go. There we go. It's a final frame. And then you're off. Oh, maybe 33 here. That's right. Works fine. So how do you want to maybe format that differently? And how does this value work? Basically, we need to go into your text editor quickly. All right, we are here in Visual Studio Code. You don't need this program for this. Again, you just need the text. It is in the video description down below. Copy paste it. You're good to go. The, this part here of the tutorial is really only there to show you what we can do and especially why it could be interesting to you. So in the first half, we have OS. So we go to the variable and ask the system, operating system OS, what date is it? Instead of the date, we uh, make up in brackets a function. This basically converts whatever we put into this into a date readable format. And the first um, string here, basically, as marked here by the quotation marks, is just saying, hey, please show the minutes and seconds and separate them with a colon. Hit comma, so to say, here's a new argument that we give the function. And then we give over the whole time that we have. So it's basically a calculation inside of this function. Time basically just refers to where in this video clip that we had, which frame it is. So frame one, two, three, four, and so on. And we can ask from the composition, hey, how many frames are there in one of the clips? So we need to get the frame rate of the clip. So basically what this is, breaks it just down and has it overflow. So if we are at frame 30, we divide it by the frame rate of 30 FPS. So that's one second and it makes one tick here. You have, if we have even more, 60 seconds, goes on and says, okay, then it's one minute in zero seconds again. And that's what all of this is here. This first half basically only shows you how many minutes and seconds there are. You can remove this minute part just M, and then you would only see the seconds. You can also add hours and minutes, and then you would see the hours, minutes, and seconds, just counting up. We're closing the expression with two dots at the end. In the middle, we have basically just another string, which is just a static sign, how we want to display what comes after this. And for milliseconds, you usually measure time with just colons, and then when you get to the middle seconds, you put a dot in there. So that's why I have dot here. You can also make it any of a sign. You could make it a question mark if you want to. Everything works here. You just put a dot here. And then with two dots coming on again, we have another calculation. This one is a bit more complex, and we're going to break it down bit by bit. We actually don't start in the front on the left side. We usually start at the end here. We have again comp.frame format dot rate, which basically just says, hey, this clip that we're looking at right now, this timeline, which FPS is this? You could also just set it to a static value of 30, according to what we know of. But if you want to reuse that code, for example, your recording is at 60 FPS, you would need to put in 60. But if you just ask the system around DaVinci Resolve, hey, what current frame rate is the clip that I'm watching in, then DaVinci can fill in this value itself. We don't need to update it every time. So this whole get prefs is basically the command saying, hey, DaVinci, give me this. And with this is defined here in the string. Again, enclosed by the quotation marks. We want to have the frame rate. And this whole thing divides the current composition frame. Divide it. So the whole calculation basically in the beginning says, hey, we have a string here, which formats everything according to milliseconds. This is what the sign means here in the beginning, basically. We have the current frame that we're watching and we um, basically make a percentage based on the current frame rate times 1000 and divided again by the frame rate. And that in the end allows us to get the current milliseconds instead of the frame 
in a full clip. So this whole one expression again is just there to define the first half before the milliseconds, the dot, as we've seen in row two, and then basically the time displayed in milliseconds. And this is automatically updating if you have not 30 um, FPS, but instead 60, for example, in the recording, this will still work. You even get a higher resolution in a sense because you don't have 33 milliseconds as steps per frame. You have 16, yeah, you basically have dot 16 <laughs> milliseconds to say, uh, dot one, and then an infinite amount of sixes because math. So the sort text, so again, the sort text can just be inserted in the expression value. As we can see here, well, this clip should actually not be that long because actually we start a little bit later. Then we see now, okay, the current timing actually of this level will start on the first frame when we get control, which is this one. So we move the full clip back here and start counting here. If you want to display these zeros, we just make a very simple text object before and just insert the zeros. And because I know this level is not longer than a minute, I can actually delete out here the minutes, I have only the seconds. Hit enter, and then we will only see here the seconds and milliseconds. Fill it up again to the end. And then when we watch the clip, we actually start a timer here for this individual level. As soon as it starts, we need to wait slightly for the door. There. So it's just counting up basically the frames and displays it as milliseconds. And then you can see next to it the amount of seconds it takes. If we skip all the way to the end, there we go, we're almost done. Just waiting for the final wave here. And there we go, we have finished the level at roughly E. Sorry, it's here. Once this timer goes away. So we can just get again cut this text object here, copy the last value basically by hand, insert this here, and there we go. And now we can start in the beginning. See how it counts up. Then right at the end, it will automatically flip over and only display the final time. If we were to remove the expression. Small mistake on my side. There we go. And that's how you can show your milliseconds. Little small mistake here again. Jesus Christ. So yeah, that's how you can uh, add a time code with milliseconds into your video. For example, to time a segment uh, in a video game, like for example, in a speed run. It's this very lengthy expression. Again, the text is just in the video description down below. Copy, paste it, fill it in. And now you also know, because I've seen the full video, how you can manipulate that. Again, just go percentage and H, percentage and M. If you want to add hours and minutes, then you would see these values. But what you also need is, again, the separator. Should we do by colon? There you go, then you have an hour. Weirdly enough, the hour is set to one instead of zero. I just circumvent that case by having basically only minutes used anyway. And there we go, that's it. Hope you learned something, hope you can use this gimmick. And then I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a good day and see you soon.